Over the past five plus years, I've programmed a ton of different video games. From arcade games, to strategy games, and nearly everything in between. But there's still one kind of game that I have never made, but have always wanted to. And that's a winter-themed game. The closest thing I've ever gotten to this are a couple of Snowflake generation programs that I've made, but I don't think anyone would consider these games. So I decided that this winter season would finally be the one where I would make this dream of mine come true. And I know that may sound cheesy, but I have wanted to do this for a very long time. But since I didn't have any good ideas for a winter-themed game, this plan was put on hold for a few weeks while I tried to gather some thoughts. And that's when I finally got an idea. Why not make a game about snowmen? I know this sounds very simple, but once I had this idea, other ideas started forming, and slowly a concept emerged. The idea that I came up with is that you are a hunter who is located in some hilly, snow-covered terrain, and suddenly, snowmen start invading the area, armed with guns, and your goal is to fend off the snowman for as long as possible, and to try and prevent the impending snowman apocalypse. Okay, maybe that last part was a bit exaggerated, but I think you get the idea. And before anyone goes down to the comments to yell at me for stealing this idea from Terraria, since the Frost Legion event has a very similar concept, I want to assure you that this is a complete coincidence, and I only made the realization of how similar the two are after I had already brainstormed this concept. Although I have played quite a lot of Terraria, so maybe it's possible that I subconsciously stole this idea. But let's hope not. Anyways, by the time I had the concept for this game figured out, it was already Thanksgiving, and since I wanted to have both this game and this video out before Christmas, it was going to be a major time crunch to get everything completed in time. Now since I've explained the concept for this game, I think it's finally time to start development. So I opened up Visual Studios, created a brand new project, and began writing out some boilerplate code to get our application up and running. And just like with most of my games, this one is written in C++ and uses a graphics library called SFML to create a window and to render graphics inside of it. I will also be using a UI library that I created called Glass that will allow me to easily add elements like buttons to the game. Now since our boilerplate code is now complete, you could see that we now have a window up and running. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but if you look at the top of our window, I decided to name this game Attack of the Killer Snowmen. This name fully encapsulates the insanity that you will soon see. And while I was at it, I decided to design a logo for the game as well. This logo isn't very high resolution, and it only uses a few different colors, but that's by design, because like many indie games nowadays, I want this one to have a simple, retro look to it. But now, let's get back to the program. The first thing that I decided to implement in this game to help get things moving is some collision. Now, over the years, I have programmed collision pretty much the same way. But just for the heck of it, I decided to try a new method this time. And boy, was it a mistake. Normally, the collision I write works like this. An entity or whatever object that is having collision applied to it will check four different sides of the solid object it is checking for collisions with, and if it intersects a smaller rectangular region on that side, the entity is then pushed away from that side, until they are no longer colliding. This method works fine, but it involves writing out four different collision functions to get the job done. The method I decided to employ this time, however, calculates the angle between the center of the entity and the object it is checking collision for. And depending on this angle, and the distance the two centers are away from each other, the program can determine where to move the entity, based on which side it ends up on. Now this shouldn't have been that difficult to implement, with the hardest part being some basic trigonometry. But since I kept messing up the orientation of the objects, I had to go through an enormous amount of debugging to get this to work. Just ignore that. Since the collision was finally done, I took a small break to design some more assets, except this time for the map. And like I mentioned earlier, this game is supposed to take place in a hilly, snow-covered area. So I tried to convey that through the art as much as I could, while also maintaining the retro look that will soon become integral to the game's personality. In total, I ended up designing two backgrounds as well as the tiles for the map, which will lead us into the next major thing that I want to implement. 
Since we only have one collision right now, which is just a floor to make sure that the player doesn't fall through the map, I decided that it was finally time to give our world an upgrade. And to do that, I need to create a tile system. To get started, I made a brand new class called World, and its primary function is to store a two-dimensional array of tiles, which is what our world will be made up of. The tile itself is just another class that will be used to store information about each block in the world. The last thing I needed to do, after fully implementing both the tile and world class, was to write out some code to render our brand new world. This involved creating a camera system and writing out some clipping code so that only tiles that are visible on screen are rendered. This helps with performance and is just a good habit to get into when designing a tile rendering scheme. Here you can see an early version of this in action. As we move around horizontally, the camera pans to keep the player centered. Now I decided to not have the camera pan vertically since I'm not going to need the map to be very tall. It's good that we have tiles now instead of one large floor but it's pretty boring with just white tiles and an empty background. So the next step was to update the rendering code to work with the assets that we created a little bit ago. And with the updated rendering code, this game is now starting to look like an actual game. But having random data for a map isn't going to cut it either. So I decided the next thing to do was to implement a basic tile editor. If you are unfamiliar with the tile editor, it's a tool that will allow me to manually change each tile inside of the map while the game is running. But in order to have tile edits saved, I added some new methods to the world class so that the map could now be saved to a file and then loaded in the next time the game is opened. And after a while of using this editor, I ended up designing this map. It looks really nice, but since the collision doesn't match up with the height of each block visually, the game isn't really going to be playable like this. So to fix this, I just ended up adding some special code in the collision application method to change the size of the collisions on the snow tiles, depending on how high the layer is. So now, the collision matches up perfectly with the graphics. Since we now have an actual map that we can move around inside of and don't have to worry about falling through, it was finally time to start implementing the thing that this whole game is about, snowmen. Just like with our tile system, the first step of this process was to create a new class, except this time to represent our snowman. And since I already had an entity class that I was using with the player, I used inheritance to give the snowman class the same base functionality as the player. That way I don't have to reprogram a bunch of features. But even though the player and the snowman both derive some base functionality from the entity class, I don't want the snowman to move around like the player does. So instead of having the snowmen just move horizontally, like they're walking, I instead want them to do small hops to move from place to place. This not only looks really funny, but will also serve as a way to dodge some of the stray gunfire from the player later on. Now as for how the snowmen look, I designed two different snowman bodies, one small and one normal sized, so that way there's some variety while playing the game. And the size of the snowman isn't just visual, it will actually play an important role in how I design some of the gameplay later on. But for now, here is what the snowmen look like in action. Right now they're currently programmed to move towards a random position in the map, and they each have a unique color that I can control. But right now their colors are just randomized. Now at this point in development, I had been working on the same features for a while, so to avoid going crazy, I decided to start designing the UI for this game. I briefly mentioned at the start of this video that I'm using a library that I created called Glass, and although it does have some multi-purpose uses, UI is where it really shines. So I spent a while working on a title screen, and here is what I came up with. This has to be one of the most satisfying menus that I have ever created, because the map is shaped in such a way where the buttons are perfectly spaced away from the snow tiles, and I absolutely love when things like that happen. Now, as of right now, the settings button doesn't do anything, but the start game button actually drops us into the map. Having some UI done was really nice, but I kind of used it as an opportunity to avoid implementing something that I did not want to add, which was weapons. This is because I didn't really know how I was going to do it, and my worries were completely vindicated because it was a mess trying to get them to work properly. And it wasn't just the weapons that were giving me a hard time either. So in order to give all of this chaos justice, I've decided that I'm going to show you what happened instead of just explaining it. Enjoy.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that slightly strange compilation. You can probably tell that the title screen looks a little bit different than the last time you saw it, and that's because the game is actually complete. I decided to skip showing some of the development process, since there wasn't anything super interesting that happened outside of the bugs that you saw. And also, since I forgot to save some of the builds of the game from around Christmas time. Regardless though, let's take a tour through the game. Alright, here we are on wave one. We start off with a handgun and have to kill all of the snowmen in the map in order to advance to the next wave. And as the waves increase, the snowmen become more difficult which is signified by their color. I also decided that the smaller snowmen would always be introduced first, and have lower health to help ease the difficulty further. Let's fast forward to wave five though, because something interesting happens then. On this wave, a strange box spawns into the map, and if the player walks over this box, it will upgrade the handgun to a revolver. This is to help scale the player's damage as the snowmen gain more and more health. And once you make it to round 10, things start getting really serious. Because that's when you gain access to the final weapon of the game, the SMG. Now everything past this point becomes incredibly difficult, but it's honestly a really fun experience to mess around with. If you are curious about playing this game at all, it is up on my itch page, which is linked down in the description below. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye